The new friends were looking at Tbilisi from the little square paved with sets. The rocks, trees and houses on the other side of the river were vaguely reflected on the Kura river. At the right hand of the bridge, upon the rock, by the ancient Metehi church, a statue of a man on a horse could be seen. It was the monument to the king named Vachtang Gorgasali. Emin had visited Metehi with his friends and learned from them about Gorgasali. He is considered to be the founder of Tbilisi. Back in the 5th century AD, he moved the capital from Tscheta to Tbilisi. Zacharia continued reading the poem. Her seda bu ses ki dünyaya dolup eksere gel Cümle mekru alu fennü fitnedir can gücedel Dirhemü dinar üçündür her şeye yapışsa el Müktedilerde itayet, müktedalerde emel Bendelerde si mübeylerde edalet görmedim There is a hadith related to this subject, sir. The world is a prison for the believers and a paradise for the infidels. That is true, but I don't believe this prison is controlled by God. Christ called Satan the prince of this world. That's why the world is full of struggle for money and power. We people have been given the mission to fight for God's reign. That is an honorary mission. God's kingdom is not given to us ready in this world. We have to work for it, laboring and sometimes even sacrificing ourselves. Many people don't understand why the Almighty God allows Satan's reign. And many lose faith because of that. People think that if they had been God, they would have put the world in order. They would have destroyed Satan and everything would have been excellent. However, God doesn't act in such a way for some reason. You know, I mean, many people do not consider others and only care for themselves. Mullah Penah also had a high position he was one of the rare leaders, and in the end he was ruthlessly killed. In this world those who say the truth, the real poets, are often killed. Like the famous Azerbaijani poet Imad din Nasimi in 15th century, Vagif in 18th century, and the victims of Stalin's repressions in 20th century. Evil people triumph here in this world, which is ruled by the devil. But in reality their triumph is but an illusion. Spiritually they are the losers. They win in the world, but they lose in the afterlife. One of the ancient Hebrew prophets, Isaiah, wrote, The wicked are like the tossing sea, for it cannot be quiet and its waters toss up refuse and mud. And he also wrote, There is no peace for the wicked. Sure, those who use the things which are haram, or even desire them, will never find rest. The Quran says that by the remembrance of Allah, hearts are assured. It is He who sent down tranquility into the hearts of the believers that they would increase in faith, and the wicked shall never have peace. The little square was right under the fortress wall. 
A road paved with sets was going up along the wall. Zaharia and Emin slowly walked on this road talking. Zaharia read the next stanza. Helgi alem bir ecep düstur tutmuş her zaman. Hansı gemli könlü kim sen eder olsun şadiman. O sene elbette ki bedgulu heyler bi guman. Herkese herkes ki etse yaxşılıq olur yaman. Bulmadım bir dost ki ondan bir edavet görmedim. Unfortunately, it is impossible to please people. You have friendship with someone and treat them well, but they do not want you to do good to their enemy. Everyone wants you to only do good to them and possibly to their friends as well. But anyone who does good to everyone is considered a bad person. I totally agree with you, sir. I used to have a friend. Our friendship lasted long. But now he has become my enemy. I was always by his side in his bad times. I comforted him and I did my best to help him. And one day I just helped another guy who was my friend's enemy. And because of that, my friend shouted at me and now he considers me his enemy. Never mind. Oh, I mean, I have had so many experiences like that. Like Vagif, I am also surprised by the strange law. They walked on the road paved with sets and came to a smaller square. There were two benches there. Zaharia sat down on the bench and Demin sat near him. Zaharia was silently looking at the city. Emin saw the huge church far away and asked about it. Zaharia explained. This church was built after the collapse of the Soviet Union. It is 98 meters high, one of the highest Orthodox churches in the world. It's called Sameba Church. Sameba means Trinity. Mr. Zaharia, excuse me for asking, but do you also believe in Trinity? We Muslims believe that God is one and that He has no companion and no child. We too believe that God is one, but we believe that He revealed Himself as three persons. The first is the Father, the Heavenly Father who created heaven and earth. The second person is the Heavenly Son. He is the Word who is born from the Father or comes from the Father eternally. The words Father and Son are used in the conventional, figurative meaning, because human languages have no words capable of precisely describing the essence of God. God created everything with the Word which comes from himself. And then he put his word into the Virgin Mary's womb and brought him into the world as a human. In this manner, the divine word became flesh and dwelled among us. God loved us so much that he sent his word to this place of yearning, or as Christians say, he sent his son to the world. The Word was limited as a human and could not exist everywhere at the same time in the human body. That's why, after Jesus died and rose from the dead, God the Father took him up to heaven bodily and sent us his Spirit. God's Spirit can be everywhere at the same time. He is the third person of God, the Holy Spirit who comes from the Father. He takes us directly to God's presence. Now that's what Trinity means. The idea of one God revealing himself to us in three persons.
Thank you, Mr. Zakharia. You've explained well, but such an idea about God is strange to me. In Islam, God is one and only one. We call it a mystery. In any case, as a Muslim, I look at churches positively. Because the Quranic Surah Al-Hajj mentions monasteries, churches, synagogues and mosques in which the name of Allah is much mentioned. And I treat with respect every place where the name of Allah is mentioned much. That's right, I agree with you. Here in this part of Tbilisi around Nariqala, there are lots of temples where God's name is mentioned. Juma Mosque, an Orthodox Church, a Catholic Church, a Jewish Synagogue, even an Ateshgah, Zoroastrian Temple. That's impressive. Sir, you just said that God's Spirit takes you to God's presence. Do you believe that the people in that church really live in God's presence? No, I don't believe so. Sadly, not everyone comes to church to worship with a faithful heart. Some people come because of their tradition and some even use church for politics. In fact, the next stanza of the Muhammad discusses this very subject. Alimu jahil, muridu murshidu shagirdu pir Nefsi emmare elinde serbeser olmuş esir Hekki batil eylemişler işlenir cürmi kebir Şeyhler şeyyad abidler ebu sengem terir Hiç keste hekke layık bir ibadet görmedim Emin said how true and nice these words are, sir. Our self is our greatest enemy. To fight against our ego should be the goal of every believer. Few people succeed to save themselves from their own selves. Those who have achieved it are called arifs. The word arif means a person who obtained divine knowledge. And our true jihad is actually against our own self. There is a hadith that says, Defeating the external enemy is our small battle, but defeating ourselves is our great jihad. Our ego is the veil between our hearts and God. It's the curtain separating us from God. I see you read a lot, Amin. Well done. I think that if you keep reading, you can become like Wagif. Not every man however, is able to live and die like Vagif. In the ancient times, people of Israel had prophets. And true poets are like prophets. For example, Prophet Hosea wrote these words spoken by God. There is no faithfulness or kindness or knowledge of God in the land. There is swearing, deception, murder, stealing and adultery. They employ violence so that bloodshed follows bloodshed. Yet let no one find fault, for my fight is with you, O priest. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because you have rejected knowledge, I also will reject you. You see, God's fight is with the priest the minister, the mullah, because these people should love God, know Him and make Him known. People are destroyed for lack of knowledge. There is sin everywhere. Whose fault is it? It's easy to find fault with others. But if I am a believer, I should first of all find fault in myself and repent.